Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Championship Leadership Podcast. we got Brian Clayton here with us uh, coming out of Nashville, Tennessee. Thanks for being here, Brian. Nate, thanks for having me on the show. Great to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I like to start off almost every single episode that we've ever done here with this question. Championship Leadership is the name of the podcast. So what comes to mind for you or what, what does uh, championship leadership mean to you when you hear that? Championship leadership. Uh, so for me, leadership is, is something I had to learn the hard way by being a bad leader for, for many, many years until I figured out how to become a good one. But the best, the best way I've heard leadership described is by Dr. Stephen Covey in his Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And he, he, he outlines the difference between management and leadership. And management is like you're chopping through the forest. You're making sure your knives are sharp. You're making sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. You're efficiently getting through the forest. And management is making sure that that's happening. Leadership is finding a big, tall ladder and leaning it up against one of the trees and climbing to the top and yelling out to everybody, wrong forest. <laughs> so, that, so that to me is what championship leadership is, is the ability to kind of climb up above it all and kind of separate yourself from the day-to-day -day, like grind of running the business and understand, are you even on the right track? Are you going the right direction? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I love that uh, description. And it's fun because you would think uh, championship leadership couldn't get uh, sliced too many ways, but it, every time it's a little bit different. So that's, <laughs> that's why I keep asking. It's one of those weird things. It means a little bit something different to everybody. Yeah, it does. It does. Um, well, let's talk. I, I think that's really your, your description is, is a good uh, segue into you and your journey, uh, which it probably isn't a surprise, I suppose, but uh, tell us a little bit about you. And I, I know you, um, if I, if I remember right, a uh, landscaping company to begin with and, and out by yourself to the hundreds of employees. And so, yeah, tell us a little bit about your story and uh, how you've got to what you're doing today currently with GreenPal. Yeah. So currently today I'm CEO and co-founder of a company called GreenPal, which is a mobile app. It works kind of like the Uber, but for lawn mowing. So this, this app is, we've been at this thing for nine years. Jeez. We're a nine year overnight success, uh, several hundred <laughs> thousand people using this app to get their lawn mowed and uh, doing multiple eight figures a year in revenue. And so been at this one for almost 10 years. Before that, I actually had a landscaping company that I ran. I, I started mowing grass in high school as a way to make extra cash and stuck with this little lawn mowing business, uh, eventually growing that to one of the biggest landscaping companies in the state of Tennessee, where I live getting it over 150 employees, over 10 million a year in revenue, uh, little by little growing it to one of the largest landscaping companies in my market. And uh, doing that, I, I learned a lot, the hard way of how to be a good manager and how to be a good leader and how to, what the difference was between the two and, and did it wrong every which way you could do it. But uh, that's one of the cool things about business is that it causes you to level up, causes you to acquire skills that you may not have ever acquired without it. And becoming a decent leader was certainly one of the things I had to do in that first company and now in my, my second company. Yeah. Well, uh, when did you realize, I, I, cause I don't know, I think about myself anyways, back in high school, I don't necessarily think about needing to be a, a, a good leader and what I'm doing, but when you're building this company and, and you're building it to where you did eventually, when does the light come on that, you know, you gotta, you gotta, it's more than just, uh, mowing lawns and, and doing landscaping, like, uh, especially for yourself as the owner operator, like you gotta, you gotta step up and, and lead. Yeah. Looking back, uh, you know, it makes perfect sense, but in the time it, it certainly did not You know, you, you don't really understand you get your first million you kind of hustle your way and, and it's like, will your way into your first million or two. But once you get to like three, four, five, 10 million, it's, it's, it's about people. And uh, that's how you get from like seven to eight figures and beyond. It's, it's all about the people. And so, you know, this, this was 15 years ago. You know, I, we didn't have podcasts like this. You know, we didn't really have a whole lot of the resources. So I was just beating my head against the wall. And it hit me like a ton of bricks one day. Uh, I was driving to the office and I was just like, I had this like pit in my stomach. I didn't want to go there. Yeah. I like, didn't like a lot of the people that worked there and they didn't like me and the culture sucked. And it was just a miserable place to work. And, uh, and I thought, golly, this sucks. And then I thought, 
this is exactly what I deserve. I built this. I created this. Yeah, yeah. I created it. Like it's an extension <laughs> of myself. And it was like in that moment in like my short 15 minute drive to the, to the shop that I, I came to like, had this come to Jesus moment where I understood that, that, that I get exactly the culture that I deserve in my company, in my organization, in my business, because it's a reflection of me. So if I'm an asshole, everybody there is going to be an asshole. And so uh, I had to learn that the hard way. It took me about three years to fix myself and fix the company. But little by little started started learning and, and started reading, you know, every book John Maxwell ever wrote and, and really, really trying to attend conferences on, on these sorts of things and learn from people who had been there and done that in order to kind of reinvent myself to become, you know, not not a perfect leader, but it's better than I was and, and, and enough so to where I could kind of rebuild the culture of this company from the inside out. Yeah. Yeah. John Maxwell, he's uh, he was probably one of the first that I that I came across and and I love his stuff and he's me been too. a big influence for me as well. Um, but yeah, that's that's an awesome story. And and it's like you said, it took you three years. It wasn't like a, I, no. I got this realization and now we're just going to fix it. Right. It's yeah. It, just like anything in business and in life, you know, it, it takes time and a lot of people aren't willing to uh, have that patience. Have you noticed yeah, that? These, these things move super slow. And, and, and I like a lot of Simon Sinek stuff that he's, he's putting out here, you know, uh, like the, the recent book, he just wrote the infinite game. That's really what that book is about is, is how these things just don't turn on a dime. They're small deposits made on a daily basis for a long period of time. And, and they're, they're like the opposite of transactional and uh, it just takes time like it for yourself and for, for, for it to permeate into the organization. If you can do it right the first time, it'll save you a lot of headache, but, but that's not how it unfolded for me. Right. Right. Well, let's talk, uh, who are some uh, championship leaders, coaches, mentors that, that uh, have come and, and impacted you in your life and, and what are some of the characteristics that have really stood out from those individuals uh, that maybe you've taken to evolve into who you are today? Yeah. So my dad won, uh, you know, he was a military guy, served 20 something years in the 101st airborne, retired as a major. And, and so, you know, he was a source for me to, to when I, when I was just like pissed off about when things wouldn't go right. And when people, what I thought were like treating me like crap in the company and like, and, and he really helped me reframe that. And, mm -hmm. and especially at a young age. So without him, you know, I don't know that I, would have gotten to where I am. And, and he is the, the resource that put me on to other things, you know, like he was, he's like, you know, you should read this book. You should read this book. You should read this book. And it, I, unfortunately I didn't start reading until like my late twenties. Yeah. Had I had started that a lot earlier, I probably could have sidestepped a lot of this, a lot of this pain. Um, and then now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in my forties now, you know, a lot of my mentorship comes asynchronously. Uh, it comes from some of the greats like 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 Jack Welch and and Dr. Stephen Covey and, and Simon Sinek in terms of people that are really trying to push the the the, the leadership ideas forward and, and trying to like pick and and borrow from every one of their styles and make it my own yeah. um, is, is how I've really kind of uh, evolved over the last 10 years, you know, going to YouTube University. And just consuming yeah. every piece of content that a lot of these folks put out is a lot of how I've learned over the last 10 years and, and like distilled it into my style, into how I like to lead. Yeah, excellent. Um, there is, there's, there's so much information out there that there really isn't any kind of ex excuse for us out there. Uh, uh, other than sometimes it can be so much that it's overwhelming a little bit. For people. Yeah. That's the hard part is sifting through the fire hose and how to know what's good and what's not. And it just takes time. Um, you know, and so like, like the, when somebody's looking for a mentor, like the first thing you do is like jump on LinkedIn and like DM somebody, I just want to pick your brain. And like, you don't need to do that. Yeah. Like, like, like yeah. first off, first off, don't do that. Yeah. Second, yeah, yeah. second, you don't need to, like, there's right. so much out there. You can, you can, uh, you can learn this stuff asynchronously from people that are probably better than, than the person you were going to try to get coffee with anyway. And uh, I have a, I have a theory in business. You're going to be doing three things at once, especially in the early days. You're going to be, you know, you're going to be working in the business. You're going to be doing whatever it is that you're selling. You're going to be working on the business, developing the systems, processes, routines, and you're going to be working on yourself. 
And there's just not enough time in the, in the week to only put in like 30, 40 hours. It's going to be seven days a week, especially in the early days. And that working on yourself piece is that's where a lot of the leadership and personal development comes in. And that, that's where I've tried to like allocate time over the last 20 years. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, let's talk a little bit about uh, you and, and Green Pal right now. I, I like to talk about uh, vision because I think championship leaders have an incredible vision. You know, I think to like Bill Belichick or Nick Saban and the football world where they continue to win every single year. They're, they're competing against the best in the world, and yet they continue to be able to adapt and evolve. And I think a big piece of that is just they can see things that others just can't, right, and for whatever reason. And they have the courage to take action on it, which is a huge piece to it. But uh, for you, uh, you know, seems like very similar space for you, right? Green pal, that you have this vision for this thing that's not even a thing yet. And here you've turned it into something extremely successful. So what is the vision for you and, and Green pal and where you guys are going in the next, maybe even short term, five years from now and uh, the impact that you wanna make most importantly uh, through that? Yeah, so I think like in life and in business, you can like, you can be on the side of society that just kind of goes with the flow and just does what everybody else is doing, or you can be on the side, which is a much smaller side that's creating breakthroughs. And, and if you decide to go that path, it can be one of the greatest things you ever do with your life, but it's hard. It's gonna take a lot of work. It's going to, it's going to take a lot of faith. Um, and, and it's going to take a lot of commitment. And for me, you know, I was kind of solving my own problem when we, when we built green pal, you know, I, I built my first company, sold it. That doesn't happen a whole lot in, in this industry. And I retired. I, I didn't have to work anymore, which was nice, but I thought I want to get back in the game. I, I had this idea for this thing. I, I think an app can make this whole thing work smoother. And so the idea then 10 years ago is really no different than what we're doing today. It was just, uh, it was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. And I think, uh, you know, one of the, the superpowers that, that my team and I had, especially in the early days, was just consistency, was just, was just showing up day in, day out, figuring out, okay, what are the two or three things that we can do today to drive the ball forward, and then doing those things. You know, like here I, you know, like the, the first thing we did when we launched was we passed out flyers all over Nashville, Tennessee. Like we needed 100 people to use this app we just built, yeah. and we had no user acquisition strategy but that's the first thing we did is we passed out a bunch of flyers. And I, I remember, it. I remember my co-founders were like, dude, what the hell are you doing out here with us? Like, <laughs> like you just sold a business for like multiple seven figures. You're like passing out flyers. Like, 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 yeah. like and I saw you got, we got like, I got bit by a dog. And it was like, <laughs> it was like, so it's like leadership, but you know, by example, you got to yeah. get in there and, and get your hands dirty or else people aren't going to chart, you know, follow you up the hill. And, Right. And that kind of, you know, it's just stuff should go without saying, but, but it, but it definitely is, is what works for me in my style. Yeah. Are you familiar with Aaron Walker from Tennessee, from Nashville area? That name rings a bell. Okay. What, what, what is he in? Uh, so he owned a lot of, uh, some very successful pawn shops in the Nashville area. He's, uh, now he's been a successful guy in many different areas. He's got a podcast and but uh, connected, he came out to that event I was telling you about that I did. Awesome. And spoke, but the only reason I bring it up, other than he also lives there in Nashville, is um, he talked about handing out flyers all the time to build his pawn shop and his business, and they'd be like slapping on people's cars, and you know, like that's what they were doing. You know. Yeah, and, and and I don't want anybody listening to say, okay, so the key to success is to pass out flyers. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, yeah. the key to success is figure out what level of the game are you at. And take whatever, do whatever it takes to get to the next level. So lay it out, lay whatever it is, 10 levels of the video game and just work each level and do whatever it takes to get to the next level. So at level one, two flyers may be the only lever you can pull, but then you'll, you'll hustle up a hundred or a thousand customers. You can learn from them, get a little bit of money and put that money back to work to get to level two, three, and four. And so, and so it's like, it's, it's, it's just dynamic. There's no one like silver bullet. And so I don't want people to hear this, like think, Oh, I didn't go out. I just need to go back to the hustle just for the sake of hustle. No, yeah. it's part of a big, it's part of a big plan. And, and that's one thing about entrepreneurship, business ownership is like, it's got this like paradox of you have to have this huge audacious goal, but you also have to think and act very small over and over again. And, and that's something that I'll point out is like, just think and act small over and over again. It compounds. Yeah. And what I hear from that is like, I just hear, you know, 
the people that are really successful are willing to do whatever it takes. And uh, they're, they're also willing to humble themselves to, to, to do it. Like, it doesn't matter that to be successful, they're going to go, if it, if it is like putting flyers out, like they're going to be, they're going to be doing that and whatever else it is that needs to be done that no one else wants to do. Right. That's right. Yeah. I see it a lot too. I do, I do uh, a little bit of coaching and, and mentorship for business owners and entrepreneurs in Nashville as a hobby. And I see it a lot, particularly with the younger generation. I know everybody wants to hate on the previous generation, but the younger generation, like and it could be, you know, it, it could be the, the, the pressures from social media, but they don't want to be seen at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. And they want to skip that part. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, you know, for, for 99% of us, we can't skip it. You're, we're going to have to pay our dues. We're going to have to work our way uh, from the bottom. And unfortunately, you know, what I see is, is like a lack of that, that, that just uh, willingness to, to work your way from the bottom. They want to skip that and do the $10 million business. Yeah. It's like, hold on, let's start a million dollar business and get, and get a win under our belt. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I actually uh, saw, I think it was a clip on Instagram where you're talking very similar to somebody that wanted to start a bowling alley and had this $10 million idea. And you're like, how about you go do a smaller business first and get some stacks some success. And yeah, let's get a little home. Cash. Let's get a little home cleaning service. Yeah, like yeah. You, if you wanted to have like the best Airbnb short-term rental home cleaning service in Nashville, I guarantee you, you could, you could make a couple hundred grand a year doing yeah, that right. and, and get a win under your belt and then go put together the business plan for the bigger thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's shift gears just a little bit. Uh, I, I enjoy this question because I think it, it's very uh, helpful, useful to the listeners. Maybe take yourself back to a critical moment in your life, kind of that fork in the road moment where, you know, you're trying to decide which way to go. Because I think there's a lot of people, especially nowadays, entrepreneurs in that in that position. And uh, obviously, you made the decision you did, which has you where you are today. But but had you made a, very, a different decision, you'd be in a very different place. Um, is, is there a, a, a moment or two that pops up for you that you could share? Yeah, there's, there's several, uh, several, several, several. I'll give you two. One, you know, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur until you cannot make payroll. And uh, there was one day, uh, I was a, you know, payroll was due every Monday and, and uh, payroll for my company at the time we had like over a hundred people. So it was, it was like 117 grand and I had like 12 grand in the company bank. And so, uh, and so like I hear, I can't make payroll the next day. And I, and I like, I was just defeated. I was, I was depressed and I almost just like, didn't go into the office. I almost just like to said, screw it. Um, but I don't know what it was, something inside me. I was like, just go in and tell them the truth. Yeah. And I went in and like, I had, you know, hundred, hundred something people. And I was like, Hey, listen, I screwed up. I've made some mistakes. That's gotten us here. Yeah. We're, this is during the 2008 financial crisis. Uh, you know, things are not good, but, uh, I can't make payroll this week. I promise I'll make everybody whole. I don't know how, uh, but, but we'll get through this and anybody that wants to leave, I understand. Um, but, uh, but I know you got bills to pay and I'm sorry, but we're not going to make payroll. And so in that moment, you know, like, I was glad that I, 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 I took the decision to go in and yeah. tell everybody this and to figure out a way to, to get through it. And now what I learned from that is that most of the time when you go through a crisis five or 10 years later, you'll be glad it happened. And yeah. so now looking back, I'm glad it happened for a couple of reasons. This was like a catalyst for me to like rebuild the business from the ground, from the ground up, take it down to the studs and rebuild it from the inside out. And, uh, and that was the cleansing moment that enabled the company to be in a position where it could be acquired. Mm -hmm. And so looking back, it was a, it was a good thing. Uh, just at the time it felt like the end of the world, you know, here I had been spent a decade building something that was about to go up in smoke. So, you know, that was one. And then, and then, and then the decision to, to sell the business was hard. It was like very much my identity was wrapped up in it. So I I went through like a melancholy phase after that, but uh, starting the second company, you know, and, and, and one thing I've learned over 20 years of business, if you're doing it correctly, you're going to evolve in a completely new person every three or four years. And that's one of the cool things about it. You know, I'm a completely new person than I was 10 years ago before starting Green Pal. It's like, I, I know all of these new skills, all of this, these new things. I, I can do certain things that I couldn't do then. And the business is like the thing that's driving you forward to, to, to learn those things. So, you know, those are two moments where had I, gone a different direction my life would have turned out very differently yeah absolutely you know when you talk about the payroll one i've been on the you know i have been on the flip side of that where 
payroll was not able to be made to me. And the leader, the owner did not have that conversation that you did. And, and clearly he, that's a conversation that needed to be had. And he chose to like, you know, I get it. He didn't want to, <laughs> whatever, he didn't want to confront it. Right. Which yeah. is just, in my mind, just a great example, like as a leader, a championship leader, those are the conversations that you step up and you have right away because it doesn't get better when you keep putting it off. Like and no. it didn't get better as he, he just tried to keep pushing the ball off. Like, Hey, it'll be a few days, a few days later. It wasn't a few days. It's like, Hey, how about you just tell everybody what's going on? I would have had way more respect for him. And, and uh, as people, it sounds like did for you when you just owned it and you know, this is where we're at, but this is where I'm, I'm going to go and we're going to get you taken care of. A lot of this stuff seems obvious, but, but uh, you know, like, I, and I asked my dad, uh, you know, that, that night, you know, what should I do? He goes, just tell him the truth. Yeah. You know, just, just tell him, I mean, just tell him the truth. Like you're telling me right now. And that's what I did. And, you know, we did a lot of hard things to make it work out, but it, it worked out. And then, and then another piece of advice that I, I've heard since then is by a guy by the name of Ben Horowitz, who, who's a famous venture capitalist. He says, when it comes to like leadership and management, if you're going to eat crap, don't nibble. Yeah, just right. just yeah. get it done yeah. and that's one thing i learned from that crisis i love that that's a good quote um for sure well uh as we wrap this up is there if there's one or two things you can leave with the listeners that if they were to take action today would help move their life forward today what would that be yeah you know i just listened to a podcast with a dude by the name of uh mark andreessen who is like the uh the inventor of the modern day web browser and he, and so he he wrote the original web browser really? in 1992 oh. and and uh he's talking about like 1992 which was the dawn of the internet mm -hmm. and how they had just released this crappy web browser and uh he had just moved out to silicon valley and when he got out there his feeling his genuine feeling was like we missed it we're too late Really? All the great computer companies were <laughs> built in the seventies. Microsoft dominated in the eighties. Apple dominated in the eighties. It's, it's over. We literally were too late. We missed it. And, and like, you know, how comically hilarious yeah. that is looking back, yeah. you know, the right. dawn of the internet and everything that's happened since then. And, and so it's like, when you're looking at opportunities, you're in business, you're thinking about getting in the business, you can feel like you missed it. But yeah. the reality is it's always going to get bigger. It's always going to be abundant. There's always going to be more opportunities. You didn't miss it. Whatever it is, get started now because it's going to get bigger, whatever it is. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's great because I think a lot of the people will use those thoughts to keep them from, from doing something that could be big, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, gig economy, I missed it. I'm too late. Cloud computing, I missed it. I'm too late. Yeah. Uh, you know, crypto, I missed that too late. But, you know, right. like, no, it's always going to get bigger. Yeah. It, it, get in the game. That, yeah. that's, that's, my, that's the one thing I've learned. Get in yeah. the game. I love it. Well, I appreciate you taking time here today. What, um, at, are there, uh, what are some ways we can check out you, follow you, learn yeah. more about Green Pal? Yeah, anybody that doesn't want to waste time mowing your yard, I've got an app for you. Uh, <laughs> just go, go to greenpal.com or download GreenPal in the App Store or Play Store. You'll get a great lawn mowing service in less than a minute. Uh, all anybody over wants the country? All over the United States. That's right. Yeah. 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 Uh, soon to be Canada and UK in the next couple of years. Um, and, and then anybody wants to hit me up, I, I put all of my effort in Instagram. So hit me up at Brian M. Clayton. Very good. I appreciate it, Brian. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, awesome. Thanks for having me on. I enjoyed it.